merci beaucoup. So thank you for being here today with us today as uh, peasants, uh, farmers, members of the public. For those that don't know, the National Farmers Union is uh, Ag Organization Canada that advocates for agroecology and food sovereignty uh, based in uh, social and economic justice in Canada and uh, elsewhere. It's a real privilege to have Colleen and Véronique uh, with us uh, today from France. Véronique Rufal uh, works uh, for Terre de Lien, Access to Land. She's the European active uh, worker facilitator for the uh, Access to Land European Network. It gathers uh, organization on the ground to facilitate access to land for peasants in agroecology. Pauline Sauvin, also working for Terre de Lien, uh, works as an advocate uh, for the uh, advocacy poll and alliances. She's in charge of development and expertise of Terre de Lien on ag land uh, and also as a facilitator of the network on public political issues to develop capacities and plead for a local and national organization. So I will leave them to present themselves, but I, can, I want to see that it's an incredible example of a national civil organization that helps farmers and peasants, organic uh, farmers and peasants, to have access to land, and which also promotes uh, manners of being owners and to manage land has a common good. This session is the first uh, series of a monthly workshops in 2022 organized by our Committee on Agricultural Land at the NFU. The goal of these sessions is to educate our members on the possibilities of uh, land uh, uh, ownership and non-traditional land uh, access as a first step in our objective and the long-term objective to implement one of these models in order to resist the inequalities, uh, the you know, social inequalities based on land, to provide access to new farmers, uh, to decommercialize land uh, ag lands, and to pursue food sovereignty. So thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I think uh, Veronique and I are quite happy to be with you uh, this evening for us. Uh, uh, I hope that you will like uh, be interested with this presentation. Don't hesitate to put your questions, uh, you know, to uh, uh, delve deeper into this at the end. So my name is Colin Savant. She's going to start sharing uh, the screen. So she's checking to see that people can see the slides. So, uh, so far, um, yes. Uh, um, we should be able to get started. Uh, so Terre de Lien, France, Access to Land, France, it's a citizens movement. Um, uh, we are there to support access to land for a new generation of farmers. Thanks. Before I get started, uh, in the presentation of Terre de Lien, we wanted to uh, give you a general context and the, uh, uh, at length. It's very different from that in Canada. You, you'll you see this with the numbers that we'll present to you. So the France is a very uh, agricultural uh, land of 55,000 hectares. Half of it is ag land. Uh, so 26 million hectares. Uh, a link to ag production. Even if it's half the territory, the ag production only represents 
3.5% uh, of uh, GDP uh, and 2.5% of the active population. So uh, less than 400,000 farms in France. So, so it's a very agricultural land in terms of population up to the middle of the 20th century. And after the Second uh, World War, there was a big transformation of the agricultural context. Uh, in France, uh, the organization of the territory is done at all levels of communities. Uh, so the regions at national level, the uh, land management is through uh, urban urbanism documents, uh, area that's agricultural, some urban land, uh, and some uh, areas that are already artificial cover. So with 26 uh, million, uh, million hectares, hectares now, and the access to land is regulated completely. From the uh, 50s and 60s, the French state put uh, up interesting tools to facilitate uh, to modernize agriculture in France, we have about two thirds of the lands that are not cultivated as uh, owned lands. The, so people that cultivate access to it as, uh, as renting. And that was set up in 46 to protect uh, the people that work the land uh, compared to those who owned it. So today it's possible to have a peasant without being the owner of your uh, land. Uh, so that status protects the peasants. Uh, these are rental uh, uh, leases. Uh, so every so many years it's uh, renewed. So it guarantees uh, freedom to practice for the land to the peasant, even if he doesn't own the land to control access to the land uh, ownership. There's uh, an organization, SAFER, which is an organization that kind of private but state control that regulates uh, access to the sale of ag land and can intervene if, if it's sold too, too, uh, for too much money and can also intervene if it sent, uh, sold somebody that already owns a lot of land. So it's a right of preemption and uh, to uh, uh, the right. So, so the mission of this is to foster favor the installation of, uh, of farmers. And, and we'll see uh, later on that these are missions uh, that are uh, there's a capacity of regulation that's not sufficient at this point. And also we have a, a, a control structure. So a policy uh, to make sure that farms are viable economically. So a minimum of area to be a peasant, but also a maximum to avoid the ever expanding land ownership. So everybody who wants to be a farmer normally has uh, an authorization to exploit it. So, so we have elements now that gives you the context uh, for regulation of ag lands in France. Um, but there are a lot of difficulties today. There's uh, more and more, we're a small, small country, a lot of population that is, uh, so uh, more and more land is urbanized or made artificial about at the rate of 55,000 hectares. They're, they're not ag lands anymore. Uh, there's a conservation of farm. There's less and less peasants now, but peasants that have more land. So in France, we went from uh, an average uh, of 20 hectares in 70 up to 70 hectares these days. Uh, so the average farm has about 70 hectares. Uh, 
and for French, uh, it's uh, a good size farm. Those show access uh, prices, uh, so hectare is more than 6,000 euros uh, compared to a 97, uh, which was 3,000. It's uh, limited compared to our European neighbors, but also this is a topic which is present today is the ag population is more uh, getting older. The average age is 52 years old uh, and in uh, 10 years, between a quarter to half of them uh, will go to retirement. Uh, so those, uh, most of that time now is to allow neighbors to expand and that's a problem. Uh, we're accelerating the concentration of land and the increasing uh, the size of the lands. So very quickly, in France, uh, the organic agriculture is the agriculture we are depending. So when we uh, have some uh, install any new farm is for uh, organic uh, agriculture, it's not very developed because even if there is a lot of ambition from France today, only 8.5% of the ag land is uh, cultivated organically. And uh, despite of all the uh, <laughs> discourses with the new uh, uh, Euro uh, European Union agriculture policy, they decided to suppress like uh, some help for organic agriculture. So it means like the farmers who were uh, uh, organic and they were getting some uh, grants from uh, European U Union, they will not be able to uh, benefit from this help. Like the HV1, other uh, environmental value, uh, which is less restrictive. And the government is trying to make them as a uh, label uh, environmental, but it's, it is not the case at all. So it's a big problem today for the future of organic agriculture in, in France. There is a lot of opposition saying if everything was organic, we would have too many agricultural land, but it's true. Like in France in agro production, we're producing organic, we would need 45 million hectares and France is 55 million hectares like in and we do not we, uh, clearly we do not have 45 uh, million hectares like to for agriculture but if we reduce like uh, uh, to have like our animal products we would only need 80 million hectares in uh, uh, organic agriculture so it leaves us 8 million uh, uh, hectares hectares just to do like produce wine or other uh, commodities and then non-food production. I will leave the floor to my colleague and I will try to put like the, the, the slideshow like full, full of screen. Uh, good afternoon, as Pauline, I'm very pleased also to join you for this uh, presentation from Terre de Lien. So to, to complete or to continue for, from this uh, French context, to introduce Terre de Lien and the way like uh, its roots I think what's important, like uh, for for the for its beginning, beginnings, it so when uh, uh, Terre Terre was born, like in France, so it was something new the French landscape. Uh, up to there, then like uh, those uh, agriculture agriculture organization, they were made they were uh, established by farmers, so they, they were using they were working on agriculture issues. So there was a, a very strong peasant movements that came out like since the beginning of 80s, like the alternative agriculture and also peasant agriculture. And finally, Tandanian was part of the first organization who work on agricultural igloo and, uh, issues and also on the, they were working on citizen issues and they were uh, actors of organic. And at the same time, the integrated individuals who, who were coming from, uh, the finance world, we integrated people coming from education, uh, uh, permanent education. I think in uh, on, ongoing education in Quebec, we integrated the individuals who, who were consumers, eaters, people who were part of uh, uh, the, the map, uh, the community uh, supported agriculture. And then, yes, uh, she, she's talking way too fast. Okay, there are. 
So this idea to, it's to say, Terre de Nien was born like at the crossing of different groups, different movements, different traditions by uh, taking over agriculture. And finally, agriculture, it's, it's for everyone. It's not only for peasants or, or farmers or, or people from the state. It's, uh, it, it belongs to everyone because everyone's concerned by the way for our, the way our food is produced, but also like how those agricultural land are used to produce food or to put food uh, uh, fuel or either conventional or organic and produce also with the uh, peasant agriculture model and produce also with the uh, mega farms uh, in the monoculture and with the uh, environmental damages. And I think it's cool like in our identity card and in, in our genetics, we find those different components. And I would say this, uh, it's mostly a, a peasant approach. And we've said with Colleen, the organization will have 20 years uh, next year. So we started slowly. It took five to six years to get results. Uh, at the start, the movement had started uh, from exchanges that there were between uh, for four or five years around uh, the different types of collective land ownership uh, and so create community farmland trusts. Uh, so it was <clears throat> around one or two farms where people, <clears throat> our stakeholders, uh, shareholders, uh, co-managers uh, to bring financial capital, but also by involving, uh, getting involved in the farm. Uh, ask her again to slow down, please. it had to be renewed. So there was a sharing between the uh, Peasant Confederation and the different uh, players I mentioned, organic, uh, uh, rural development. Uh, how do we get to invite uh, vet new forms of access to land uh, and uh, manage the land? Uh, uh, so it's close to the, uh, what you were asking before to renew uh, the generation uh, and uh, also to have, uh, how do we uh, get to give priority? Uh, <laughs> So she's telling them to slow down a bit uh, because we want to translate as closely as possible. So the idea, how do we foster access to new farmers and uh, agriculture, but also how do we get to manage collectively lands in another manner by having a collective property uh, that's uh, sustainable and to involve citizens, uh, not only farmers, uh, uh, those with around them, but to imagine new types of solidarity between citizens and producers, uh, between urban and rural, between generations as well, uh, people that have more or less money. So how do we collectivize this work? to invent new forms of ownership of uh, land transfer as well. The new forms of uh, to decommercialize the land. How do we get it out of the market? So from 2006 uh, to do this, we set up some, uh, some uh, land uh, trusts uh, and so it's a society or an enterprise that's held by shareholders. It's kind of a solidary investment fund, uh, about a hundred euros. Uh, everybody can buy a share and we invest it uh, to buy agricultural land. Uh, so that uh, was set up in 2006. Uh, <clears throat> we were overtaken by our success because of a lot of uh, uptake. Uh, 
we're able to bring in more money that we're expecting and to buy more farms uh, and to uh, realize this vision to decommercialize land. In parallel, gradually, we developed the regional associations. Uh, uh, so it's not only national, but there'll be an uh, association in each region. Uh, uh, 19, uh, we don't work overseas, uh, but on metropolitan areas, we have uh, regional associations to counsel farmers or aspiring farmers uh, to help them <clears throat> to work with their local collectivity and to also know the local situation we're a small, smaller country than you, but there's a big difference, uh, big regional differences. So it allows us to be closer to farmers and citizens and closer to the uh, land market. Um, <clears throat> so from 2009, the foundation was set up and the foundation will become eventually uh, uh, will collect uh, donations and legacies. Uh, so in kind uh, or also in cash uh, as well. So it could be uh, uh, an apartment in Paris that we manage uh, and to convert it and to capitalize that money. Or it could be a donation or a legacy of land. Uh, uh, so the foundation allows us uh, to establish partnerships with local uh, communities, municipalities, which is also very important. And we'll come back to this. So from 2013, we started to co-acquire farms with a local collectivity. So the community buys the farm or they buy it together with us. We share the cost so that municipality can have a, an active role in, uh, in the installation of uh, farmers. So the first organization for structure, the first one is a federation in which Pelin and I work. So they take it into account the public interest and the citizens aspect of it. So that, that's quickly how we got started. <clears throat> so, and by explaining how we had started uh, to complete on how we got started, what's the end uh, results and the principles? First of all, is to conserve land as a common good. Uh, so ag land are under quite a bit of pressure because more and more is becoming artificial uh, uh, infrastructure, commercial uh, things, urbanization. Uh, so use uh, land for tourism and uh, leisure. So, so the idea is to change uh, the look at this since World War II. So it was seen, uh, ag land was seen as as something that was available for urbanization by the intrinsic value of ag land, the fact we need them to feed ourselves, it was not seen as an objective per se. So they started to get more value when it had urban or tourism value. So the idea is to change this. Uh, we have so uh, much uh, 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 grabbed and, and fragmented some of those lands, we need to change uh, the way of seeing this uh, and conserve ag land to preserve ag land uh, within the French territory to preserve, preserve their quality after uh, 30 to 40, 50 years of uh, conventional agriculture, a lot of erosion, contamination, uh, polluted the water courses, environmental pollution. And the last dimension is the idea is to, we want to, you know, we have to take them away from speculation to have another approach on how we see land. It's not uh, 
it's not a heritage for finance and, and wealth. It's 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 a common good. Uh, it's a common resource uh, that we have to reappropriate. Uh, so we have to change practices and uh, change in regulation on the way that how we approach this. So we want to see it as a common good. Secondly, as I mentioned, uh, that we are a citizens organization in alliances and integrating uh, as it, it's, it's the idea to make agriculture a, a thing that's important for all, to build new solidarity around uh, peasants and owners. Uh, one of the problems is insulation, isolation of farmers. Uh, there's higher suicide rate than other professions, uh, uh, economic difficulties, a loss of uh, sense in this stream. So we want to buy a uh, She's uh, she's uh, taken off again. <clears throat> it's so we have to decide on type of farmers we want, how we orient territory. Uh, we have to work together and translate into save uh, collective dynamics. Uh, it could be savings, donations, and uh, part sharing uh, the use of the land if. The farmers overwhelmed. We can have uh, volunteers to come and help uh, to uh, set up shelter belts. Uh, 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 you know, take care of the wetland. Uh, that solidarity uh, is done in a concrete manner. Uh, thirdly, to contribute to development of organic and peasant farming agriculture. <clears throat> We wanted to see at the outset uh, to look at ag lane. It, there was a double transition uh, between generations and also between ag models. Uh, the way the lands will be used, uh, if it's a young person or a big farmer that's increasing, it's not the same effect uh, on jobs, on territory, I don't know if the same uh, for you. There are more uh, young people that do agroecology compared to those who are already set up. Uh, ask you again to slow down. So we want to promote uh, this double transition. Uh, we want to uh, ensure sustainability of agriculture between uh, the question of ag model and also generation. And the last part of our structure is say we will, uh, uh, we are, uh, so she got the message, to Shlun. we are uh, an organization on the ground. So to do this, to uh, transform this, uh, that's that's what I figure people get enthusiastic and nervous and they accelerate. So the last uh, aspect is we work on the ground. Collectively, we have to find a very concrete, tangible solutions. Uh, we will create solutions uh, that propose uh, solutions through a land trust, uh, foundations, uh, mobilize citizens to bring uh, tangible solutions, uh, acquire land, uh, and to help peasants in uh, organic agriculture who are ready to uh, use different practices with us. And it's a, a miracle. Uh, I, I, it's, it's quite an achievement. Every farmer that we're able to support in their installation to, and get them to stay there so we can secure land that they might have lost. Each time it's a great success for us. So this uh, action is uh, very important for us, uh, whether it's farmers, municipalities, uh, who want to develop a green belt, uh, 
all of those concrete solutions, tangible solutions, is is great, and also political change. So kind of a two uh, two fit uh, tangible actions, but also that we can articulate those solutions on political changes uh, of legislation. So we want to uh, call upon uh, uh, political uh, uh, stakeholders. So uh, I'll talk a lot about professions. Uh, and we will start to uh, go through like our roots. And finally, like our first job is to mobilize the citizen, to make them understand the importance they have, like the, the, why they should be concerned about agricultural land. And so they talk how to orient them. And to talk is to give money, to invest, to uh, to the land trust, or to mobilize like with farmers, or it could also ideas to collect uh, money. So there are several ways, many many ways to mobilize. Is to is to maybe uh, call their uh, politicians. Yes, well, there's an agriculture crisis. So do you have a project like a planning project? So the uh, mod mod modalities of mobilization they are very uh, multiple. So it's just the idea like the agriculture is everyone's business. So it's up to everyone to decide how those land is used in our faith. first uh, base is to mobilize the citizen. Our second job, which is as essential, is to advise and coach farmers like to access to land, either like uh, farmers in place or people who, who would like to become farmers and who do not have access to lands. And the one the non issues from from uh, farmers, uh, individuals who are not from a farming environment, and they do not, they will not uh, receive land like in uh, in the land. So so they can find land without having a if they don't have access. So it's quite important, and it, because this uh, population was uh, invisible and was wasn't helped for by the by the public disposition. So we tell the we tell them yet yeah, other organization who were developed like uh, over the uh, year two thousand to help this uh, specific population. So this year they became uh, new uh, people, uh, new farmers. Like they're not from the uh, far, uh, farming environment. So they are they just change uh, their career changers. They decide to have a second life, like after a first professional, like the, like it, it could be a computer computer science or management or etc. And they decide finally to become farmers as as a second professional life. So we all have this coaching uh, work with this uh, farmers or future farmers, and of course our third essential uh, job is to purchase uh, farms or or receive uh, farms in donation and to and to put them at the disposition of the farmers. So usually we do we do them like with with, with long term rent, like often like. So those rent it's with the whole career, like if they if they want. You. So it's between the, mo the moment of uh, purchase, the time they purchase, and retirement. So, so we, we protect farmers in France, and we and we will use those uh, modalities for for those uh, contract with farmers, which which are uh, protect them, and with a specific specific city, uh, with uh, environmental aspect, and uh, Pauline will explain it uh, later. So that's our third. Uh, a job or trade it's to purchase and rent farms two additional jobs one well into this second one colin will colin will said so the first what the fourth uh, job that was developed like, over, over the last six seven years in our second uh, destiny of existence it's all the work with the stakeholders not only work on with specific farm but have territory approach uh, around let's say around the specific uh, co uh, community we have to maintain a green belt and some municipalities uh, because they wish to do so they want to increase like uh, uh, organic products av available maybe for for a nursing home a hospital or school and they are looking to uh, in, to install farmers and uh, organic farmers and they might have like a public line and then they contact us to reflect with us and, and we reflect not only how to purchase for uh, 
organic foods, but how they can create maybe like an organic farm it, uh, close to their uh, community so it doesn't become from elsewhere. And, uh, and also they want to create jobs and they want to add it on their territory. So, so, so slowly but surely, so we're working with uh, other grassroots organization and we're working on more on territorial approach above like uh, individual farms. And the last uh, dimension is how we can make this relation, the link between the, those changes and political change. It will be explained later. So that was a, a quite big overview of our activities, our actions. So now we'll explain how we are structured to allow uh, this activity. So we have the different structures of Terre de Lien. <coughs> so we'll get into the function of each of them. <coughs> so the land trust, uh, so it's basically we started in 20, 2006 to buy farms in France and to install peasants. Uh, so it's a, a, a company that emits shares, uh, except that here it's uh, uh, the shareholders don't have uh, a, uh, an absolute power on the management of that, uh, of that uh, uh, business. So, so we have anonymous uh, management uh, committee. So, so the Terre de Lien, l'ANEF, and a third uh, uh, a person that has a small share in the action, there's an overseeing committee. So we have some over 17,000 shareholders, physical or moral people that have bought uh, uh, shares in Terre de Lien. That's worth 100 euros. All this money is put as a capital of, the, of that uh, land trust to buy uh, land, farms. So this structure is recognized by the state as a solidarity uh, business, uh, and it's certified. Uh, so that's a recognition that we're able to win gradually from the state to show the interest of our action for the overall interest and to and allows us today to uh, reduce uh, uh, taxes, uh, to attract new shareholders. Uh, so, if, so the capital is right now uh, 118 uh, million 452,000 euros. Uh, so 22% is institutional savings. Uh, institutions who have uh, invested uh, money in this uh, land trust. Uh, so there are obstacles uh, so that nobody can take over this uh, business, this uh, it's structure that has money and it's uh, uh, an important landowner and farm owner and friends. So, so what's important is that it's uh, a financial structure, but that does not exclude capital for us the fact of having a share to be a bit of an owner does not mean that it's creating wealth. Uh, what creates wealth is, is for those who work the land, the peasants themselves, not the shareholders. Uh, so to attract those shareholders, we have a system. So uh, uh, tax breaks, uh, so people that buy uh, shares can get uh, 25 uh, question the equivalent of 25 percent of the actions as a deduction another condition to stabilize this is you buy a share for at least seven years after seven years you can uh, sell your part your share and you can buy uh, a few shares and to say i want this to be used for the purchase of the farms or uh, so it allows people to be closer to in terms of projects within their territory in terms of protection one quarter of the capital is set aside and the rest is used to acquire land and uh, 
and uh, buildings, uh, farming buildings. There's about 250, some farms have been pulled. Uh, uh, so five minutes. Uh, it's okay, it's a bit longer, but uh, we have an example uh, with a farm here. This is an orchard uh, bought by Terre de Lien. They want to make sure that their land Will, would continue to be cultivated in the way that they liked uh, as uh, uh, organic agriculture and by purchasing uh, this orchard. And uh, 17 hectares of land, 43 acres. Uh, the sound is slowing down. So allowed uh, to keep the person who was there, but also to install four new people they could also work and add value. Uh, people, that they, they uh, sell their produce uh, and it mobilized uh, a lot of people on the ground. When the proposal to buy the farm, the people who wanted to uh, set up, it didn't have the money to set up. Have, uh, also mobilize the neighbors and the friends to bring uh, capital to uh, uh, allow uh, this uh, and we'll come back to it later the foundation is the second structure uh, veronique explained it's a foundation that's uh, recognized publicly you can get donations or in legacies, uh, uh, oh, legacy of land, or, and it gives us a capital to invest, to buy land, uh, to conserve land over a long time. So there's only a uh, structure that have uh, no end limit that they can exist uh, forever. So, uh, and there was this idea that this would also facilitate uh, the work with communities. Uh, as Veronique mentioned, I'll go to the rest here. We said, uh, we tried to uh, foster organic agriculture how this is done, we, so this uh, allows us, uh, people who are not owners to cultivate land. So the buy or uh, the uh, lease uh, or rent uh, helps us uh, people to, in that contract, we can have environmental clauses. So to impose some elements or some practices to protect the environment, uh, biodiversity, the landscape, water quality, and uh, uh, produce. So it's an important uh, balance to have. We don't want to get involved in the choices of the farmer themselves and to limit their liberty. But because we have that vocation to protect the farmland over the long term, we want to make sure that the crops, the practices, uh, are uh, respectful of the environment and uh, and have a good quality land in the long term. So these are the results from Terre initial results. Yes, uh, to put it concretely or maybe to put it or to help you to see like the uh, magnitude of uh, what we were able to uh, do in a little bit less than 20 years, a few numbers of uh, some data. First, uh, I was uh, telling you like, uh, and you mentioned also the importance of the uh, citizen involvement. And today it translates like the fact like the 19,000 citizens are involved with Tardelien in many uh, 
different ways as shareholders, uh, donors, as volunteers, volunteers with the uh, land association, uh, volunteer with the uh, farmers and the different type of volunteers. And we have 19,000 citizens uh, that are involved and which is uh, good for uh, agriculture movement in uh, France. And it's a very important number. And we're also recognized like, for this dimension and uh, a lot of we have a lot of challenges and uh, questions, but we are very proud of the, the, that the citizens involvement. And it was consolidated over time and slowly but surely, like we increase our uh, uh, revenues. And today we were able to collect 124 million euros, either in the savings and the donations so the, uh, the uh, capital collected of 121 uh, 21 million uh, euros ensure our uh, stability of investors since uh, there are very few individuals that can invest and those investors will retire their uh, investments. There is great uh, stability for, for, from uh, share, uh, investors and money, money collected. And with the money collected, we were able to coach the establishments or the maintain consolidation of 206 farmers. I'm seeing coaching like establishment and, ma and maintenance because sometimes we have to buy like uh, uh, the whole farm or land like uh, where a, a peasant was working. And sometimes we only uh, purchase one uh, lot they are uh, doing agriculture. So we have other like uh, owners and maybe sometimes like once the land is for sale, will try to purchase that piece of land that get, so they can consolidate the farmer. But we do not have like all the land like the farmer is using out of those uh, 206 farmers, uh, about 30% uh, are women and 10% are uh, uh, collective owners. When we say collective owners, it could be like two, three, nine, 10, uh, 12 uh, individuals like who are established themselves on the farm. And that movement's been very uh, uh, strong in France, like over the last few years, so it's to, it's to share like uh, the, the workload of in agriculture. Those uh, 206 farmers, uh, they, they work about 120 farms, and I'm saying also like, so maybe the number is a bit higher, so we, we'll look at this, uh, and then to give you the right data, so it represents 7,000 uh, uh, acres, like uh, they are dedicated to or organic uh, farming and peasant agriculture. So we, we, we keep like the environmental uh, aspect on it. And I would say maybe that's uh, the purchasing component, uh, like purchasing and the leasing of land. And uh, we, and a very important work, we are able to coach uh, close to a thousand uh, uh, farmers looking for land they want to establish and they want like uh, to work on an agriculture pro project and, and they cannot find like uh, some land so a lot of uh, farmers like, the, who we coach and we help them establish they're look they've been looking for land for five six years they cannot find any land because people do not want to trust them and sometimes they, they had uh, small jobs after small jobs and they're uh, they, they work on different farms, and, but they're not able like to get a loan from the bank or often like uh, established farmers or, or one retired, not trust them because they're, they're not from the farming world. They're not from the village. They're not from the region or because they're coming with the long hair and the vision of organic agriculture. So, so this uh, coaching component for for future farmers, aspiring farmers, it's really very important in our work. And to say like we contribute like to the uh, su succession. And we also coach uh, uh, dozens of the partnership with the uh, collectivity. So, so sometimes they purchase community farms and uh, maybe it's our work would be just uh, to look for, for land and just also to, to look for, for farmers who will soon be retiring and seeing what their land will happen. Will it be purchased by neighbors just to uh, expand some existing farm? Or is there any hope like to have someone to take over that, that land? So that's the type of project we can work community farms. Sometimes with those communities, we can do some purchasing work, uh, work on farms, but sometimes it could be different. Sometimes we will work with the uh, uh, farming communities to buy uh, uh, 
land and maybe to do like a farm start, as you would say here in Canada. So this could be the type of collaboration with the uh, co communities. So what we see on the map here, it's the map for, for the land. So it's not it's not been updated completely. It's and it's just to give you to give you an idea on the, how they are spread out and also like a, to the fact we're almost everywhere and we'll be able to comment if you're interested. Like there's still some areas it's easier for us to be implemented than others. And for those who know a little bit of uh, farming in, in France, like you see like some spots when there are less from. So these one here are made big farms like the, especially like cereal so we have a more we have a harder time like to establish ourselves so we could conclude maybe with the the new issues uh, Vero. i'll let you conclude on the and then after the end of the question we we could we could go back yes uh, so these are, so I described like all the, our position, our trades. And now like over time, like as we, we were more known, so we consolidated ourselves. So we became, uh, we were deployed ourselves like uh, on over the territory and uh, we were more solicited by the different uh, stakeholders. We were, we had to, to start to develop new uh, uh, jobs. First is to co coach the transmission of a farm. So we were asked more and more, not only for young farmers, but it's only uh, farmers who would like to establish, but also we were uh, asked by uh, older like uh, farmers, like how they can transfer their farms. So I'm thinking big, first well, these were like pioneers like for inorganic farming so they wanted to maintain their farm like in the or their organic farm but with the aging uh, farmer population in france and also the recognition that that uh, we have individuals we have individ individuals that want to become farmers and sometimes like it, they're not from the farming world, but they have more. There are more and more individuals like they're at the end of their professional life, and for us farmers, and they contact us. What can we do? I would like my farm to remain a farm. I do. I don't want it to be bought by neighbors. I want my farm to remain a farm, and so it's a so it's a, a life. It's an environment where you produce, live, and it's important for neighbors and the local consumers. What can we do? So. So today, like uh, we were brought to, to work with them and uh, it was to help them uh, think how they can prepare like the uh, succession of their farm and prepare their farm and also to accept like the, the new farmers, like uh, they, they will uh, take uh, their farm. So we have a uh, work uh, to, to do as uh, a, as a uh, intermediate like this. So that this is the first block of new of uh, new jobs and, and also the second block for for a private owners is more and more like we have owners that they're, they're not uh, themselves farmers but they they own a lot of land say well you my land i would like uh, for my land to, to be used uh, organically and to be used like for local uh, food uh, production and meat so can you help me like to find a new farmer who will develop like this type of agriculture that corresponds to my values and we also have uh, we're developing a, a new job to die to uh, discuss with owners who want to orient their uh, land in a specific way to correspond like to the agriculture uh, uh, practice we want to promote and also we have about twenty thousand individuals and they're involved with Tardelien. and we have about two thousand active volunteers and it also involves like uh, to to uh, reflect how we welcome those volunteers, how we can uh, uh, bring them to uh, maybe uh, take position to position on those uh, new jobs because some volunteers, uh, they will be coaching individuals who are retiring, discuss with them and to see like, it's not only us like the paid workers, but we have uh, uh, volunteers that, that are able to discuss uh, with uh, communities, with farmers, with uh, owners, et cetera. And the last issue that's important for us uh, to consolidate over the last few years uh, 
as we've said, it's part of our values and charter to develop agroecology, so to make peasant farming into organic as well. So there's environmental aspect uh, on farms. We realize that beyond that, uh, that organic is good for biodiversity. We don't always know how to measure it, uh, how to make it a uh, progress to, uh, to, for it to be fruitful. We have to see what could help uh, to make it more efficient uh, on farms. Uh, plus en plus pris en France et en Europe et je, je parais, je... In France and in Europe, I don't know if it's something that you are seeing as well. We are more and more caught in a debate uh, between the practical and political with environmental organization that we consider allies and with we share many values and, and objectives, but for some of them, they, they reject uh, agriculture overall and saying uh, farmers are, uh, I'm looking for the term, are, are they can't be changed. Uh, they are not going to change. So they're going to new to, uh, to pollute, to uh, affect the biodiversity and pollute water. So they want zones without uh, farmers, uh, without human activities, because that for them, it, that's what it helps. Uh, to preserve biodiversity. But for us, that's not the case at all. We want uh, something that's compatible with the environment and to work seriously on biodiversity, to work hand in hand with environmental organizations. It's for us uh, a way to go beyond the debate uh, uh, between those who want to uh, preserve land from any activities, even agriculture, and to say, well, look, uh, some land are going to be polluted uh, uh, so we are trying to uh, bridge uh, to take this issue of biodiversity. So, and I'll stop there. Thank you.